everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of the Nature City Podcast. I'm your host, Carl Pardelli, and I'm also the CEO and co-founder of Nature City, having started the company over 20 years ago with my wife, Beth. And since then, it's been our pleasure to have served over 500,000 customers by offering them the best supplements we can make. Today, we're going to be talking about why you should choose active folate instead of folic acid in supplements, a very important topic. In case you don't know, vitamin B9 is commonly known as folate. You know, folates are found in many foods, but most supplements contain a synthetic form of folate called folic acid. And although they're used interchangeably, folic acid is not the same as folate. Today, we're going to talk about why just about everyone should look for active folate, which is known as 5-methylfolate, instead of folic acid in supplements. But before we get into that in more detail, let's quickly review a few of the reasons why you should even care about folate and why it's important to good health. Now, like many B vitamins, folate has many roles in the body. I'm not going to cover all of them. But some key examples like um, folate is is very important for red cell formation and function. Folate works together with B12 um, for iron to work properly in your body. For cognitive health, folate is very important and helps support mental and emotional health. Um, Folate also helps produce uh, genetic material, so your DNA, RNA. And, you know, it's particularly important because it's important in cell development and and tissue development, there's a high demand in the body for folate during pregnancy. And recent evidence evidence also uh, has shown that folate is also actually important for fertility health, which is something we had not seen till recently. Now, there's one other key function of folate, which I want to spend a little more time on, because it's very important as we age, okay? And it's how folate works with vitamins B12 and B6 to keep levels of an amino acid called homocysteine in a normal range. Now, homocysteine is a byproduct of protein being metabolized in the body. So it kind of happens every day. You, you metabolize protein, and you know, a byproduct of that is this amino acid called homocysteine. Now, high levels of homocysteine can, um, can be harmful to your health. So your body has a process which involves the B vitamins to convert homocysteine into beneficial amino acids that the body needs and uses. You know, it's very likely your doctor is monitoring your homocysteine levels as part of your normal blood work because normal levels are associated with better, better cardiovascular health, better cognitive function as we age, and probably you know, a dozen other things that are happening in your body. Now, there's been this debate of causation versus correlation. In other words, you know, is homocysteine just an indicator of your health status or is it a contributing factor? I think um, the evidence is pointing more towards it being a contributing factor, but some others might disagree with that. I think one thing all health professionals can agree on is we want to maintain homocysteine levels in a normal range. With a normal range considered to be less than 15, 1, 5 micromoles per liter. Many researchers, though, believe that being below 10 is even more ideal to support healthy aging. Now, as I mentioned, folate is a key part of the body's process of dealing with homocysteine. The challenge is it's not the most, the easiest, it's not the easiest nutrient to get from diet. The recommended daily allowance for folate is 400 micrograms daily for adults. And unless you're getting three or four servings of vegetables like spinach, broccoli, kale, Brussels sprouts, or beans, which contain a lot of folate, you're likely coming up short. You know, it's interesting. I bring lunch most days to work, and I always usually that includes a salad made with arugula. And arugula has a lot of great nutrients. I also like the taste. And I just kind of assumed there was a good amount of folate in there, right? It's a green leafy vegetable. I was surprised there's only about 10 micrograms per serving. So if I'm trying to get to 400 micrograms a, in a day, you know, 10 really isn't adding much. So this is why really, um, oh, one thing I want to do mention too, because when we cook our vegetables, 
it's really important how we cook them. Okay. If you boil vegetables, it's going to destroy a lot of the folate. Okay. You might lose as much as half of the folate content of those vegetables. However, if you're just steaming your vegetables, which is, I think, preferred for a number of reasons, you certainly, uh, you almost maintain all of the folate that's in the raw vegetable. So definitely choose a steaming over uh, the boiling. So anyway, this difficulty of getting enough folate from diet alone is why supplements with folic acid have become so popular, right? Did you really try to help to bridge the shortfall and give us enough folic, again, give us enough folate each day that our bodies need each day to maintain good health? However, this only addresses part of the challenge. You know, as I mentioned early on, whether you're getting folate from foods or supplements, your body has to convert it to active, the active 5 methylfolate form for it to be biologically useful. Okay, so, you know, you, whether you're getting folate or folic acid from supplements, your body has to go through a process using enzymes to convert, convert it to 5-methylfolate. And by the way, just so you know, 5-methylfolate is a, is a short, short form for 5-methyl tetrahydrofolate, but we're going to just keep using 5-methylfolate or active folate. So to make this conversion, again, it's a multi-step process involving different enzymes. And as we know, as the years go by, our bodies tend not to make these conversions as efficiently. So not all of the folate or folic acid may make it to the 5-methylfolate form. Okay, so, you know, unfortunately, if we don't get all the way metabolized, metabolize it all the way to that 5-methylfolate form, it's not really useful to the body. Now, there's a more important issue that affects about 30 to 40% of the population, including your host, me. We, uh, those of us in this group, have a genetic variant called a polymorphism that inhibits the ability and activity of an enzyme that's key to making the conversion to 5-methylfolate. The result is much of the folic acid and even some of the folates that you get from food are, do not end up getting converted into the needed 5-methylfolate form, okay? So if you're in this group, you definitely should take a 5-methylfolate supplement instead of folic acid. And in case you're not sure whether you've been tested for this genetic variant, it can be done, it can be done as part of your normal blood work. Uh, just ask your doctor to test for the MTHFR polymorphism, or just say, I'm curious to see if I can convert folic acid to 5-methylfolate efficiently, and he or she will know what you're referring to. So, re but regardless, even if this um, you don't have this generic variant, everyone, in my opinion, should be taking 5-methylfolate since that's what our bodies ultimately need, right? And let's you know we always like it when we uh, with supplements when they require our body to do less work. And since it's now available as a supplement, that hasn't always been the case until the last probably 10 or 12 years. I believe it's the way to go. Again, why give our bodies extra work to do, especially folic acid, which requires an additional step to make this conversion on top, uh, on top of compared to, I should say, when we get folate from food. With folate from food, there's one, one less step, step involved. With folic acid, your body has to do even more work. We believe that the best source of 5-methylfolate is a brand called Quattrofolic from a company based in Italy named Gnosis. Quattrofolic is very pure and of consistently high quality, and it's not derived from animal sources. So it's vegan friendly, you know, vegetarian friendly. Plus, it's been shown to have an excellent safety profile, and several research studies have found it to be superior to folic acid. For example, in one study that I found interesting, they were looking at supporting the homocysteine levels in this study. Okay, so they compared combining. 400 micrograms of, quat of quatrifolic methylfolate with vitamins B12 and B6, because they work together with respect to helping keep homocysteine in a normal range. They compare that to taking 
five milligrams, okay, which is over 10 times more folic acid, also with the B12 and B6. They compared those head to head to see how they would perform in helping us maintain healthy homocysteine levels. So the results were quite interesting. You would expect with 10 times the amount of folic acid that it might perform better than the 5-methylfolate, but it was just the opposite. The quatrifolic 5-methylfolate was found to be superior than the 5 milligrams of folic acid. Again, it just underscores why I think 5-methylfolate is pretty much for everyone, not just people with the generic variant who struggle to convert folic acid to 5-methylfolate. So if you're interested in 5-methylfolate and quatrifolic specifically, we include it in two products. The first is our whole food-based True B B vitamin complex. This is where seven of the eight B vitamins come from organic plant sources, and we also, which includes natural folate. However, we also add in 400 micrograms of quatrifolic. That's the RDA, and was just and it's the same amount those uses used in the study I referred to. So we add that in so every we can ensure that everybody is getting the benefits of 5-methylfolate. Uh, since B, vitamin B12, I said seven of the eight vitamins, uh, B vitamins are from plants. Uh, so we had we had some meth, methylfolate, but we also fortify it with active B12. As you may know, B12 really isn't found in plants, so we can't have a plant-based you know B vitamin complex without fortifying it with, in this case, the active B12, which is called methylcobalamin. We also have a second product which includes quat- uh, quatrifolic five methylfolate. And it's our True Recall product, which is for cognitive health and focus. This also includes the active B12 and B6, which again are folate's partners in keeping homocysteine in check. And you also get a couple, um, three or four other nutrients that are really important to cognitive health. And again, this product was built, was designed really to help you with focus and concentration pretty much immediately within an hour of taking it, but also help protect your cognitive function and your brain health over the long term. So that's it for this week's episode. Um, If you like the episode, um, you can please like it or you can subscribe to our YouTube channel to see future episodes. Uh, We're also available on your favorite streaming services, whether it be Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and others. And also please go to our website, naturecity.com, where you can find both True B and True Recall. But you can also sign up for our email list. And every week, you'll get an alert, an email, which will tell you about the latest episode that just dropped. So this is Carl Perdelli, and I will see you next week.